this is Tamara from mooglyblog.com and in this video I'm going to be walking you through the Chic Moves Poncho, which is a free pattern you can find on mooglyblog.com. Please go to the link in the description as you will need the written pattern to make this project. This pattern calls for Red Heart Chic Sheep by Marley Bird in two colorways, although you could make it in a solid or more than two if you prefer. I used linen and VIP, four balls of each. You will also need a USK hook, this one happens to be by Furls, and of course your standard crochet tools like scissors and stitch markers and yarn needles. Let's take a look at the finished Chic Moves Poncho. This is a one size fits all pattern and here you can see it modeled by me and I wear a size large. So this will vary a little bit depending on your size, but with this one size it should be able to fit just about everybody. As far as I can figure it's up to at least a 6X. So now let's take a look together at the finished poncho. Okay, now I have the Chic Moves poncho on the little table in front of me. Not quite, unfortunately, a big enough table to show the whole thing at once, but hopefully those still pictures I just showed you of me modeling it helped you see how it looks. You can see we've just got a nice, here, get the corner up here, it's a squared off poncho. We've got a kangaroo pocket made in one piece here and then sewn to the front. And then at the top, if I pull it way down here, you can see there is also a hood. And you can see too that the normal fabric here for the majority of the poncho is a bit of a mesh. It's seven double crochets, chain two, skip two, seven double crochets across. But then the, the fabric for the hood is more solid, so you get a little bit more warmth and protection there. So like I said, this is one size fits all. And for help when you are blocking it out here, I did include a schematic with the pattern, which you can see right here, and this gives you some dimensions. When you pull the hood up straight like this, there we go, you can see how it kind of comes to a point and then folds down, and that's the measurement I've given here, which is why it's got this kind of little funny drawing there. The back is made in a solid rectangle, the front drops down just a little bit more for the neckline, and then the hood is added, and of course the pocket it is added right here. So this schematic will be very helpful as you finish your poncho. Another thing I want to point out on the written pattern, there are several notes about ways you can change the poncho to make it more custom for you. If you like a stretchier neckline, this one's got a relatively tight neckline. It's what I wanted, a little bit more structure, but if you want a stretchier one, I've got some tips for that and a tutorial on how to make those stitches. And you can also do a couple of other little things uh, to make the poncho just a little bit better if you like it or a little fancier and use some just extra techniques, whatever you like. So I've got some great tips for that here. Also, I know that extra rows can be added if you want a longer poncho. Again, you can look at the finished pictures um, of how it is on me. I'm five foot eight to see where it hangs on me. This pattern is made with, as I've mentioned, Red Heart Sheet Sheep, which is a worsted weight yarn, so there is a little bit of weight. So it will pull a little bit longer when you're wearing it than when it's laid flat on the table, too. So now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the stitch pattern for this poncho. Okay, now, as I've mentioned, this pattern is one size fits all. And if you look at the schematic, you can see that the width of the poncho is 35 inches, which means it will fit up to a 70 inch bust and it would theoretically still close on the sides. Although of course, since it's a poncho, that part doesn't even really matter. But I wanted to point out too, if for some reason you want to make it wider or you want to make it a little narrower, it's a multiple of nine plus three for the beginning chain. So basically you can take the written pattern and add or subtract any multiple of nine chains. So you can add nine more or 18 more or however many more if you want to make it wider, take nine away if you want to make it smaller. So that's the schematic. And then like I said, you will need the written pattern for this project. And we're going to start with the back piece and row one is going to be the wrong side. And I'm going to begin with color A, which is our linen colorway. Now, I've got my color A with a slip knot on my hook ready to begin crocheting. This pattern begins with a chain of 111. For the purposes of time today, I'm not going to chain 111. I'm just going to do two repeats, which is 18 plus three. So we can do a little sample size poncho. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That will be our first multiple. One, two, oops, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's our second multiple. And then one, two, and three. There we are. Now we're ready to begin crocheting in our pattern. I'm going to double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. One, two, three, four. And those three chains I just skipped are going to count as my first double crochet. 
You may also note that I'm working into the back loop, the back hump rather, of the chain rather than working under the top two loops. This is just a personal preference and how I like to crochet. I think it gives a really nice finished edge and it makes it nice when you attach the border, but if you prefer to work under the top two loops, that's totally fine and up to you. Now I'm going to double crochet in the next chain. And then I'm going to begin our repeat for row one of the back piece. I chain two, one, two, pull up some more yarn here, skip two, one, two, and then double crochet in the next seven chains. And that's going to be our basic repeat until we get right about to the end. In order to keep the diagonal mesh working on this pattern, each row is going to be just a little bit different until we get into some repeats later, but it's always going to be basically the same. Chain two, skip two, and double crochet in the next seven. We just have to sort of shift that chain two, skip two over a bit to keep the pattern working. And I'll tell you, it's it looks like a lot written out, but once you get going with the stitch pattern, it becomes really obvious and you can actually sort of read your work to tell you exactly where each uh, chain two, skip two is gonna be in the next row. So you can maintain the diagonal mesh. So let's see here. Was that seven? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Perfect. So then we chain two, skip two again, and we would do single crochet or double crochet, excuse me, in the next seven on a cross. Now, because this is our little one, we aren't going to have a full seven to crochet into. We've gotten to the end of our repeat. We're gonna pretend this is a full size poncho. So when you get to the end of row one, you're going to just end up double crocheting in the last five stitches. That's two, three, four, oops, there we go, and five. All right, and with that, we're ready to begin row two. Okay, so for row two, we continue with color A, which is, in this case, I'm using linen. We're going to begin with a chain three and that will count as the first double crochet of row two. So that means we don't work back into that first chain or that first stitch, I should say. Then we're going to double crochet in the next six stitches. So that's one, pull up a little bit more yarn here. You can see I've got a couple of yarn dispensers working for me today. Chic Sheep can be a cent, can, you can pull from the center. Some people do, but I prefer to pull from the outside. It's not officially a center pull ball or center pull skein, although a lot of people will use it that way. So I just like to put it on a yarn dispenser. I've got a couple different ones here and I will link these out in the uh, link in the description too, if you're interested in them. So I've got my chain three and then I've got four. So I've got to do six double crochets. Now for the purposes of this pattern, we're going to look at these chains, these chain twos, just as if they were more stitches across. However, rather than working into the chains themselves, I'm just going to double crochet right into the chain space. So here we've got two chains. I'm just going to work two double crochets right into that chain space. So there's one, and I'll do this next one a little slower. Go right into the chain space, not the chain, but the chain space, and do two. So even though we're working into the chain space and not the individual chains, there were two chains there, so we're counting them as two stitches. So that means we've got our chain three and our six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we can begin our repeat for this row. We chain two, yarn over here, skip two, and double crochet in the next seven. One, two, three, four, get a little bit more yarn going here, five, and then we're back at our chain two space, so we're just gonna do six and seven right into that chain two space, six and seven. Then we would just continue that on across, where you can see our chain twos are going to be just to the left here, or the right, depending on if you're left or right-handed, of the previous chain two space. So you can just keep working on across and you just wanna make sure you maintain that diagonal. So coming back the next row, you'll see how they have to be on the other side. Now, we're at the end of our repeat. We've done chain two, skip two, double crochet seven, on across, on across, on across, all 109 stitches. We get to the end here and we've got three stitches left. Because remember those skipped three chains are going to count as one of our double crochets. So we chain two, skip two, and just work a double crochet right in the top of that chain three. I'm getting my hook in there. There we go. Always the fiddliest part, working into the chain, right? 
There we go. So that is how we finish off row two. However, at the end of row two is where we're also going to switch to color B. Because for this pattern, the way I've written it up, I'm going to switch colors every two rows. However, I'm not going to cut the yarn, I'm going to float it along the side. Now I do have a separate video tutorial for that, but I'll show you a little bit about how I did it in this pattern right now. Now to make the switch though, since I'm not cutting the yarn, I actually didn't want to quite finish this stitch in the linen. I want to stop when I have two loops left on the hook. And I'm going to go ahead and grab my blue. This is the Chic Sheet by Marley Bird in VIP. Find my end here, leave a good end on the end here. You don't want to accidentally pull it through and you want to leave enough to weave in. And then I'm just going to yarn over with that color and pull through to finish that last stitch of row two with color B. Then I can hold on to both these ends to sort of just give them a little bit of tension. And I'll chain three again to make that first double crochet for row three. Then I can turn and work back and I know that those are gonna pretty much stay in place. If you feel like it, you need to, you can try and weave this end in right away or work over it a little bit and that can help tack it down too. But you want to leave the working end of the linen hanging here so you can pick it up in another two rows and start working in it again. When we finish up our poncho, we're going to put a border all the way around the outside that will cover up all of those floats. So looking at our pattern, we've got our chain three, which counts as our first double crochet for row three. Then we're going to double crochet in the next seven stitches. We've got our chain two here, so that means two double crochets worked right into that chain two space. So that's two. Kind of tug those out evenly there. And then three goes into the next stitch. Four, five, six, and seven. Now I talked about maintaining the diagonal direction of our chain two, skip twos, and this is where you can see we're going to have a chain two, skip two. We chain two, skip two, and start working again right in that chain two space for another seven double crochets. Let me get just a couple in here. There we are. Got a little bit of a yarn tangle that wants to happen there. And I'll straighten that out here in a minute, but you can see we're maintaining the diagonal of our chain two skip twos. So that's what we want to use as our visual cue as we make each of our subsequent rows. And of course I've written out in the pattern too exactly how to do each of those rows. So you can refer to those, but if you're a visual crocheter, if you are good at reading your work or you enjoy reading your work, that is a great way to tell exactly where you should be. So that's six stitches. I've got one more, that makes seven. And then when we get to the end of row two, we've only got two stitches left, so we need to handle this one a little differently. Normally it would be a chain two, skip two, but we're just going to chain one, skip one, and then double crochet right in the top of that chain three again. And that is it for row three, and we're ready to begin row four. I'm going to begin again with a chain three for our first double crochet. And then I am going to double crochet in the next stitch, which is our chain one. So I'm just going to go right into that chain one space for another double crochet, like so. Then I need to maintain that diagonal pattern. So I've got a little break there, so I'm moving back this way. I know I'm gonna have a little break here. Chain two, skip two, and then double crochet in the next seven. One, two, Oops, three. Get a little yarn straightened out here. Four, five. And then we're back at a chain two space. So six and seven will go right in that chain two space. Six, seven. And then gotta maintain that diagonal pattern. So we chain two, skip two, and then double crochet in the next seven. And that's the repeat on across, of course. As you've seen, that's the repeat for all the rows. It's basically chain two, skip two, double crochet in the next seven. The change is going to be as you're working back in different directions, you're gonna have to move, you can see the edges a little bit, the ends are always ending up a little different just to maintain that pattern because of course it's not going to work out perfectly every time, but that is all in the written instructions. And like I said, you can do this really visually too. When you get to the end of row four, you're going to end up finishing off row four with a double crochet in the last six stitches. So I've got five here. That sixth one is going to go into the top of that chain three again, 
but this is also where we're ready to start changing back to color A for the next row. So I've got my hook in the top of that chain three there. Now I want to start pulling color A here up closer so that it doesn't float all the way up the side, all the way up these two rows, but is tacked down a little bit right here. So there are lots of different methods for doing this and everybody's kind of got their favorite, but I find it's helpful to just sort of loop color A right over my hook there, sort of hold it out of the way. Go ahead and yarn over with color B or whatever color you're working with. And then when you get up to the point, there's two loops left on the hook here Then you can just pick up color A. You can see it's tacked down a little bit more there right on the side and yarn over with that one. And then of course we leave our color B, our VIP color here, just hanging out ready to be picked up again in another two rows. And then we're ready to begin row five. Now, row five, of course, is a little different because of the ends, but it's basically the same. Every row of this pattern, you're going to be having a chain two, skip two, double crochet, seven, repeat. It's just the ends that are a little different. So you can check the written pattern for that. It actually ends up being a 19 row repeat just because of those ends. But like I say, once you get going and you sort of see how this comes together and how this diagonal mesh is maintained, you really barely have to check the written pattern at all. So we're going to continue, we would continue rather working Basically, it's 109 stitches across, if you count those chain twos, for each row for the back until we have 44 rows made. So we're going to repeat rows 2 through 19 until we've got 44 rows made, and that will end us on a row 8 repeat. So basically, you can follow that or you can follow the schematic until you have the measurement shown here, which is 26 inches, or if you've decided to re take some rows off or add a few more rows, then that will be a little bit different too. So basically that is the stitch pattern though that we make for the back. Then after we've gotten the back made, then it's time to begin the front piece. And the front piece has a little bit of a break for the neckline. So we're going to begin with the front piece first shoulder and then the front piece second shoulder and joining. So let me demo a little bit of how, how that comes together too. Okay, so here I have the finished poncho again, and I just want to show you how I added the front piece, how I began adding it. Now, this was the very first row, let me see here, this was the very first row of the poncho I made, and it was actually worked in this direction. To add the front, what we're going to do is turn it around and join to that foundation chain. So this is, excuse me, I keep pointing at the wrong part. This was the foundation chain right here. So then we're going to come back and add the front working right into the foundation chain that we began for our back. So we're going to go ahead and join from the wrong side of the fabric. So if we go back to the little swatch here, right here, you can see that this was my first row. And the first row is worked on the wrong side. That's why on the written pattern it has WS after it. So this was the last stitch made in the first row on the wrong side. So that is going to be where I join for my first front piece. So you can use your tail if you've worked a standard chain and then crocheted back into that chain. You know with your tail that's going to be the first stitch you join to, just right into the foundation chain. And this was one of the reasons I liked working into that back hump. Now when I join, I've got a really nice line of chains to work into. It's going to be just that little bit easier. And bonus, when we get to those chain two spaces, we'll treat them exactly like we did before, just working into the spaces. So we don't actually have to struggle to get into those chains anymore, even though we're really working to the foundation chain again. So to begin the front piece of the, the first shoulder of the front piece, we're going to go ahead and pick up our color A again. And like I said, we're just going to join right to that very last stitch you made in row one of the back. So we're going to put our hook in there and there's lots of different ways to join. I like to just join with a real tight slip stitch like that. I pull the end down and it's nice and tight and now I can begin with a standard pattern. I'm going to chain three for my first double crochet here, two and three. And then I am going to double crochet in the next two chains. So the next two stitches, chains, however you want to think of them at this point. They're officially chains, but they feel more like stitches even though they're at the bottom of our first row. There we go. Then I'm going to begin our repeat again. We chain two, skip two, double crochet in the next seven. So you can see, even though I'm really working into that foundation chain, we're still maintaining that diagonal mesh. So again, once you get started here, it's just back to the same old, same old. Now, 
The front piece is worked in two shoulders because I wanted to have a little more room for the neckline here. So when you're working that front piece first shoulder, you're only going to repeat that chain two, skip two, four times total. So you make it once and then repeat it three times. Then you'll chain two, skip two, double crochet in the next stitch. So let's um, pretend we'd done that here. We'd worked across and we'd done that repeat four times. We would chain two, skip two, double crochet in the next stitch. So let's see, chain two, skip two, double crochet in the next stitch, which is actually a chain two space there. And then we would go ahead and break the yarn. So we're going to work, it'll get us not quite halfway across. If you have followed the written pattern, then it's approximately 13 inches across before you end up breaking that yarn. So that's how you end up finishing that last repeat for the first shoulder. However, like I say, then you don't want to turn. You're gonna go ahead and break that first shoulder. And I'm just, since this is just a little swatch, I'm not even gonna leave enough here to weave in. I'm just gonna go ahead and finish it off. And then, to begin the second shoulder, first you need to skip 25 of the foundation chains. So you can see here we just made one stitch into that chain two, so I would count 25 starting with this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, where you've got a chain two there, on across until you've gotten 25 across. That's going to be the opening for our neckline. After you've counted out 28 stitches, then you would join to the 26th, the next one, and finish off that second shoulder just maintaining that stitch pattern and that's in the written pattern with more specifics too. Basically you would join to the next chain, chain three to begin and then begin your repeat on across finishing it off just as you normally would when you got to the end of this row. Then when you turn and come back to make the second row of the front piece second shoulder and joining you would work again in pattern chain two skip two double crochet in the next seven until you get to the end of that second shoulder and then you chain 25 remember you skip 25 here so we're going to chain 25 that will be the front of the neck and then begin working again across that first shoulder so let's take another look at that finished poncho so you can see how that comes together a little easier okay so here on the finished poncho you can see there's one shoulder and the second shoulder and a chain of 25 that connect the two right there that's that base right there at the bottom of what ends up becoming the hood. So if you take a look at this picture from the written pattern, you'll see I've put a stitch marker right in the center of those 25 chains. That's where you're eventually going to join up to add the hood. However, if you don't want to add a hood, you can simply work a border of single crochet in I like color B, but whatever you prefer, all the way around that neckline. So. After you have finished making those first two rows and joining them, you're just going to continue to work in pattern. You can see here, of course, this is actually upside down since we're working from the top down, but you're just going to maintain that pattern. Change colors every two rows, keep the diagonal mesh going all the way until you've got 44 rows again. Okay, so then when you get to the end of the 44th row of the front, you can go ahead and break color A. We won't be using this one anymore until we make the hood or if you wanna make the hood or um but don't break rather color b we're going to continue with that one at that point after making that last 44th row i just chained one and then started right up the side evenly crocheting all the way around so at this point the yarns that you have floated up the side you can totally cover those with your border just make sure you enclose enclose the floats themselves inside those single crochet stitches so then i just single crocheted all the way around the poncho and then like i say you can go back and add the hood if you desired let's take a closer look at the hood real quick together here okay now as i mentioned the hood itself for this poncho is optional however i wanted to take a look at how it comes together here if you've got your marked stitch like i showed you in that photo right in the center of that long chain of 25 in the middle of your neckline that's where you're going to go ahead and join to begin your hood and you're simply going to start again with color A and then color B and then color A and then color B. And these are just solid double crochet rows. The only thing that you need to note is that for the first four rows, we're going to begin with a chain two and then double crochet in the next stitch. And that chain two and double crochet in the next stitch will count as our first double crochet two together. And then when we get all the way around to the end, we do a double crochet two together to finish it off for that first row. The second leg of that double crochet two together will be in that same marked stitch. So we join to the marked stitch, chain two, double crochet in the next, counts as our first chain, double crochet two together, double crochet all the way around the neckline until you've got one stitch left on that 25 chain there at the front, 
and then you'll work a, begin a double crochet in the last one and finish double crochet two together back in that marked stitch then turn chain two double crochet in the next one go back around the other way finish with a double crochet two together do the same thing for rows three and four that creates a nice face opening and then beginning for rows 25 through all the way through the top which is row 28 we're just double crocheting even back and forth in rows all the way through for the hood when you get to the very top then this right here is row 28 so after you've made row 28 you want to break color B leaving an 18 inch tail go ahead and break color A leaving a regular 6 inch tail to weave in but you want to leave an 18 inch tail because if you look at it like this we've actually been working in rows right we've been working flat straight across boom 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 then when we get to that last row we're just going to take our sides fold them together like so and then I recommend using stitch markers or something to help hold your stitches together but you can take that 18 inch tail and of course you'd be starting from the front because that's where your tail will be when you finish off that row and then mattress stitch seam the top of that hood closed if you prefer you can whip stitch it I think the mattress stitch looks a little bit better I do have a separate tutorial for that linked out at the link in the description as well so definitely check that out once you've got that hood made finished up and seamed then of course I just added another little single crochet edging all the way around the hood what I like to do even though I'm just single crocheting evenly all the way around the hood is when I get down to that point there right at the beginning or beginning that first row where they meet I just worked a little single crochet two together I think that gives it a nice little shape right there for the bottom of the hood then there's only one optional piece left the pocket okay and here you see the kangaroo pocket on the front of the chic moves poncho this is basically just double crochet made with color B the VIP color I worked evenly for the first three rows and then for rows 4 through 12 we've got those decreases again just like we were talking about at the hood double crochet two together at each end and that creates the great opening here so after 12 rows when I got to the end there I turned and then came back and single crocheted all the way around the outside of the pocket just to give it a really nice sturdy edge then just go ahead and sew it right to the poncho you can he see here I just used the back stitch again in color uh, color B would be the VIP so I just stitched it right to these rows and in the written pattern I tell you that I sewed them to rows 26 and 38 I have really long arms though so if you prefer um, your pocket a little higher or lower try it on go ahead and use stitch markers to just kind of tack it on where you think it would be or where it says in the pattern and then try the poncho on at this point and see if you want to raise or lower that pocket a little bit especially if you've added extra rows or taken some rows off um, if you're not five foot eight uh, you may want to move the location of that pocket and you can really customize it the main thing is of course to get it centered on the neckline right here and you can definitely use stitch markers to help you get that lined up as well when you sew it of course you'll want to sew right across the top and then right here on the sides and across the bottom but you'll want to leave these parts open for the so you can get your hands in there or whatever else otherwise it's not a very good pocket right it's just for show and we all hate pockets that are just for show usable pockets for everybody so that's how you go ahead and add the pocket like I say it's otherwise just double crochet so you can get any details you needed for that on the written pattern which will be linked at the link in the description so that's how you make the chic moves poncho once again please go to the link in the description there you will find a link out to the written pattern as well as both the right and left-handed video tutorials should you need the other one and a list of all the supplies you need which I'll have linked as well so if you liked this video give it a like give it a thumbs up let us know what you think in the comments I hope you enjoyed it I hope it helped you make your own chic moves poncho and please don't forget to subscribe to the Moogly channel and click that bell so you'll know anytime we go live or when there's a brand new video to check out thanks so much for watching Thank you.